Welcome back everyone for another installment of our Logan Built DIY Rebuild Kit series. So today we are going to get the overdrive section put on the main case here and then the main case will be done and ready for the valve body and pan. So the first step in doing that is we need to get our apply piston, make sure it's cleaned up. Just like everything else, I like to run around the outer edge of this with a scuff pad. I like to check and make sure that you don't see any big giant grooves. Now this will get a little scratched up because it's riding, you know, it's aluminum on aluminum riding on each other. Um, so some scratches are okay on this. Just make sure that there's no big giant gouges that are going to possibly tear up the lip seal. And then at this point you should really only have two of these lip seals left in your kit. This big outer one, as you can see, is the correct diameter for that. And then the inner one here. Just like all of the other seals, the lip side, or the tapered side, whatever you'd like to refer to it as, needs to go together like that. So that way it's catching the fluid that's applying it from this direction. And then same on the inner seal here. So, we're going to lube these babies up. And install them on our piston. And then just like all the seals, make sure they're not rolled run your finger around them, make sure they're lubed really well. Now you really want to make sure that these are good because there's no way for us to air check the overdrive section. So uh, you're going to have to make sure that you're very careful about the installation of this. Make sure that this seal goes in good, goes all the way in, and now we're good. So now the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to install this piston with these two tabs into this piston, oop, there goes the accumulator part, into these two holes right here. And it's really important to get those lined up because if you don't, the piston won't go in all the way. So, to do so, we just set it down on top of the piston support, get it lined up with your eyes, and then the best way to do this, and unfortunately I'm not going to be able to get you a good camera view of this, but you want to make sure you get the center of this started first, the center lip seal. And then this is very important for the outer lip seal. You pretty much have to have this, in my opinion, to do it with confidence knowing that you didn't tear the lip seal. So I'll push this back and forth just a little bit to get my center seal started, and then it'll fall down on the outer seal. And then I'll take my lip seal tool and I'll push it down in the seal here. And then I'll roll this around in a circle while I'm applying even pressure on this piston with my fingers in my left hand. And I'm going to roll this around until I can get it to start seating down like it did there. And then now this is where we need to be real careful. Now we need to roll this. Sometimes this gets hung up. So you have to pull it out put it back in and you'll find the spot of the seal that's hanging up and then you can take it out and put it in. So that went in very smoothly, no pressure. Do not fight with this. If you're fighting this, stop. If you get this cocked at all, when you're putting it in there, it can tear that lip seal and the first or couple times you put it in overdrive, it'll blow it out and it'll be a wrap. You'll be pulling this thing, at least the overdrive section back apart and checking it. So. Now that that is installed, there's one thing that you need to look for. You're always going to have some rock in this piston. But every now and then, you'll tear apart a transmission that it has a bunch of rock in it. And that is because there's a little boss on the inside of the piston here that actually hits one of the piston retainer bolts. And uh, there's actually like an OEM recall on that. So just be aware that if this thing, if you put it in and it's rocking a whole bunch, then you need to buy a different piston. So, at this point, we need to go and put our selective spacer back in here and make sure that we're using the correct selective spacer that we checked a couple videos back. In our case, this is that Sonex 170,000 spacer. And now that that's in there, we need to go and get our gasket. Your gasket is going to look like this. It's only going to go on one way. And this little tab here breaks off, but don't break this off yet until you put it on because the reason that this is here is so you can hold it and position it while you put the overdrive section on. So you just line that thing up like that. And then now we're ready to put the overdrive section on to the intermediate shaft here. 
Now this is where you're going to want to make sure that you have some trans gel on the bearing that rides on the overdrive gear set because if you do not it will fall out while you're trying to put this together and then you might uh, have the bearing offset to one side and then that's going to cause you problems. So I try to use the minimal amount of trans gel possible like I've said in the other videos but make sure you use enough to where it doesn't fall off. And you're going to flip this thing up and it's nice and heavy so be ready for that and then you're going to spline it up and if you've done everything right when you assembled the overdrive section you should be able to just push down a little bit of pressure and this will fall in just like that so you know that you've done everything right there and then now you can hold on to your tab of gasket over here and get the overdrive housing bolts lined up so now let's get the overdrive housing bolts cleaned up and we'll talk about the procedure of installing those all right, so we've got our overdrive housing bolts here. These are a uh, 3 8 16 bolt, 7 16 head. We've got them all cleaned up, ready to go in. If you see, if you look, you'll see that uh, they have some Loctite on them from the factory, some of that nice thread tape type Loctite. Uh, and so uh, a lot of times you can just put these back in with no Loctite. But if you want a little added peace of mind, I would suggest putting just, just a little bit of Loctite on these things. You really don't need to put much on them yeah, a little bit will go a long way and the reason that i like to do this is because a lot of times guys aren't the best about checking their u-joints and their carrier bearings and their drive shafts and if you have a driveline vibration it can easily back these bolts out even if you have them in there really tight like i like to put them in there and then of course uh you always really need to check that kind of stuff because you can easily bust an overdrive housing apart by a bad U-joint drive line vibration. So we're going to run these in, basically get them all started by hand. Alright, so all the bolts are ran down snug, and this is one of uh, pretty much very few things on the transmission that I actually don't torque. Some of the reason is, is because you can't torque these two adequately anyways, and I just like to make sure that they are super duper tight. These are uh, pretty hard to strip out. Anybody could if you really wanted to try, but uh, honestly the way that I like to do it is I like to tighten it up, take the hammer and tap on it, and then move them about a quarter turn. And if you do that with the red Loctite, you'll absolutely never ever have a problem and you'll actually have to use the hammer to get them back off and you also never have to worry about tearing up the threads. So. That's really important. Like to make sure that those are good and tight, just because if you do have a drive line vibration, it can back them out. So we're almost done with the main case here. There's just one more thing on this overdrive section that we need to do. And 
That is, we need to reinstall the snap ring cover up here. So installing the snap ring plate cover is super simple. You're just gonna get your cover and you're gonna go in your seal kit and you're gonna find the gasket that looks like that. And as you can see, it lines up on there. And then you have two T25 Torx screws that are a taper screw. So they fit flush into the snap ring plate here. And you're going to install those. Now you don't need to lock tight these or anything special. These aren't uh, common of backing out or anything like that. You just tighten these things. Get them started by hand. They're a coarse thread, so they're a little, you know, you gotta get them going. And then take my T25 screwdriver, run these things in. I like to tighten up one side just a little bit and then come over here and tighten up the other side so that way the taper centers it where it wants to be. And then once I get both sides ran down, I'll go ahead and tighten them up pretty good. You know, as good as I can do with a screwdriver. That way you don't have to worry about stripping them out and those things are never going to go anywhere. So now we have our complete case assembly 100% done. So the next thing we can do is lay this thing on its back, air test it one final time with everything assembled in the case just to make sure that we don't have any weird case issues and then we can put our valve body in and pan. So we're getting really close to the end of the series here. Just a couple more videos and we'll have this thing wrapped up. Thanks for watching guys. Catch you on the next one.